Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Canvas. I'm basically Evan, Kevin and Nancy Manzan. Um, we're just going to touch a bit on his journey and he's going to offer, also offer some advice to young cricketers, upcoming cricketers um, and also people who just play in the game. Um, and on the last segment, we're going to touch uh, a bit on his experiences playing all over the world. Um, and the name of our segment is Toad Iron. So, Leonard, you have played cricket all over the world. Um, any of you have had a career that most players would, um, would love to have. Um, you have many years. Good times and bad times, and obviously that's a that's a no. Um, but tell us a bit of where where it started. Please. Well, it all started for me um, at the age of 15, or even before. I could say seven, eight, and I used to with my brother in Savannah play cricket, um, and he was my like my mentor, my idol. Um, I was looked up to him. He was like the captain of our team when I was growing up there. The, club team where I live. So uh, it started from there, he carried going to the Savannah Hotel and, and just being involved in cricket and just, that's where it started for me. And I played for school and then I had the love for cricket and it just started from school and from there I went through the ladders and went straight up to see what to cricket. And do you think that it would been more difficult for you to achieve what you have achieved and become the player that you have became um, if it wasn't for him? Um, I must say he has a major role in my life, even on and off the field. Um, always been there for me and at times when I always needed practice. And you always need someone to push you in life, especially when you're aspiring to be a professional athlete. Especially you need someone to, to be there for you, to mentor you and push you because it's not easy on days when you don't feel the practice and, and you don't have anyone. And you can easily be distracted. So it always good to have someone there, like my brother Cohen, who would always be there to push me. And, um, at the early age of 13, I was introduced to the to, to North Swing mm-hmm. B-side cricket, where I started playing on Muffin, and then I elevated to the senior team, which is came from 18, at the age of like 14, 15. Um, and also that, um, just being able to come from the B side and move on to the A side. Um, I guess I would like how how did you feel? Did you feel like that, like you were ready to do that or? Well at the at the young age of, of thirteen I was batting opening batting for the B side and facing fairly good pace to me which I find was quick to me at that time. So I made a transition from being an opening batsman on, on, on the B side to going on the A side and playing batting number four. But it was never easy because at my age I always liked challenges and I always noticed that growing up I never had kids around my age to say that I played my age group. There were always people in my, like five, six years older than me where it would always be ahead of me where I grew up. So it was always a challenge to be at their standard. And at the age of 15, I was on the A-side, so that was a big achievement for me. And then at the age of 15, I played for Trinidad. At the age of 15, I played for West Indies. So I guess um, within that period of time where you were a teenager, um, and developing your game, um, you would have been trusted into rules, like, as you said, playing for Trinidad, playing for West Indies. Um, how did you feel like you handled the pressure? I mean, you, you just said that you love, you love challenges, but... Um, at some point in time, at some point in time, there will be uh, times where they have pressure on you. Um, how would you like? How did you navigate that? Yeah, well, there's always pressure. You being a youngster, most big men. I would say big men. I wouldn't say young men. I would say big men because my myself and one other guy, we shot about it. Because there two youngsters in the team, and Shahan was like four years older than me. So you would always have pressure. You to, to, to perform, but at the same time, you have guidance. From, the, from these big guys, so yes, there was pressure, but at the same time, knowing that the ability that I had, they didn't put too much pressure on me, and always knew to me through the way. So, a lot have to do with where you come from and the people who you, who you grew up with. Um, I just kind of continuing on that note in terms of pressure. Like, uh, question I get a lot is, do I feel pressure um, coming after you going for seeing that you all did so well at the international level? Um, and I, I guess I would always say that 
I put a lot of pressure on myself because I know I have talent to reach for. Um, but did you feel that same pressure like coming up to the world? Did you just be or were you, were you just free in your mind? No, I would say I was free in my mind. I know that I had a reputation of being a similar so I want to have a reputation of being a similar so people expect you to be like who your mentor would be, which is Phil. But I was no class to Phil to come compared to his hard it his build. My shock it was very close and good. So it was it wasn't I wasn't pressured by it, but I also liked the fact that I had a reputation that I had to maintain and that I had to, to live up to. So it was good in a way. Um I, I do know that you played two World Cups uh, on the night team. Um, how did I go for you and I know you played West Indies soon after that. So how was it? How, how was that transition from under nineteen people? And how did it go for you? Um, how, how, how did you make that transition into senior team? Well, at, at, at age nineteen, I played. I played under nineteen for Trinidad, and at the age of seventeen, and I made it to to West Indies under nineteen. That's my first World Cup, and I scored a century in the regional tournament and I scored a century in the World Cup as well that I played at the 8th century. So it was a bit of relief for me and um, getting my experience in New Zealand. Mm. First time playing in New Zealand and that was a, a very good experience for me. Um, a lot of guys who I played in that World Cup with not back then, they played in international cricket now. So I got to in Argyle just to name a couple. <coughs> and then Coming back from that World Cup, we went into to our senior team in Trinidad, right? So, but I didn't make the, the cut one time, but Ravi and Paul and Dwayne made it, and they went to the World Cup with me. So it was something to look forward to, knowing that we just on the verge of playing in yeah. um, first class cricket, because most of those guys who played at that World Cup with us had already played first class cricket, or was on the fringe. So it was a big is a big step in life going forward in our careers to play first class cricket, which is the first step to play international cricket after first class cricket. So, yes, it was a bit difficult because when we played, we played with Brian Lara, Richard Smith, Keno Mason, Marlon Black, and these guys were playing for Western at that time. And then we come up against guys like Frederick Collins, who is seasoned. Season players for in domestic cricket and also playing for West Indies. So at age 17, 18, facing those guys was like a big step in yes. my life. So I really look, I, I embraced the challenge. I didn't do as well as I thought I would, but it was a good experience. And looking back, like you looking back to all those experiences, did, um, did you think that you would have done so well over all those years? Like, do, do you think that you would have reached the point that you have reached, you know? Well, I, I would say that I worked hard from, from young coming up. All I knew was cricket. All I knew was going to the Savannah of Cohen and putting in the work, back in bowling, back in bowling, and I go to the Savannah at 4 o'clock and be the last person to be. Go to the Savannah early in the morning, Bangarambi, who bowls at yeah. 50 kilometers per hour <laughs> and back in four yeah. hours. So, I would say put in the work early on and eventually once you put in the work you will reap your rewards sooner or later. You just have to be dedicated and be patient as well. And in your journey so far you have won World Cups, IPLs and numerous other, other um, trophies throughout the world. Uh, how does it feel to win um, and be a part of winning teams and also contribute largely to those wins? Well, I must say I take pride in my performance, whether it be the, the group stages, semi-finals, playoffs, whatever it is, I take pride in my performance. So it's always good to be on the international scene, be always been on TV, um, worldwide, everyone's watching you. So when you go there, you have a reputation to maintain. Um, you have a lot of fans that back you as well. So, <coughs> yes. There's pressure when you play for West Indies, there's pressure when you turn up in a World Cup and you're in, in the final. And you have to put your hand up to be confident because that's where the best and where everyone would see and rate you on how good you are. 
and how consistent you are. So it's great to play in a final, any final to play in any part of the world, whether it be franchise cricket, domestic cricket, expo or World Cup stage, there's nothing better to go there and perform in a World Cup. And being in a World Cup and performing is like a dream come true for any player. But it, the experience getting to the final is where matters the most. I mean, if you go to the World Cup and you don't win, you don't win. Yeah. But the journey along the way is what really matters. Enjoying each other's company, the, the camaraderie that you have among your, your teammates. And so when you go to the World Cup and you play the finals and you win, you enjoy that success more than anything else. Uh, so, for a lot of us that never been to a World Cup, never you know, open battle or battle, or just, you know, play in front of so many people. Like, how does it feel to walk out there and know that you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders? Because I know you said you love challenges, so. Well, for me, honestly speaking, the final is the easiest game for me. Right? The hardest games is the, the preliminary games where you now start a tournament, and that gives you momentum going forward. Once you start well, you have nothing to worry about. In terms of like getting a score, like some people, batsmen, go to a tournament, they want to get a score, they want to be in a team. But when you get to the final, there's only one thing that happens. Either you win or you lose. Right? So there's nothing to worry about. All you have to do is go and play a game. And just look at it as another game, which will be the last game. So whether you perform or not, it doesn't matter. That's the last game. That's how I look at it. So when I got it, what sense we can put pressure on you did well in the whole tournament? Yeah. Why going one game to put pressure on yourself? Just go there and play it as another game. So that's what I do and it works for me. And you have this this style that I know a lot of my um, fellow players love to watch. People who, do, who doesn't even know about cricket love to watch. Um, I guess it's all, always categorized as, as like a West Indian um, flamboyant or flavor of the cases. But, um, for me, like watching your bat is always kind of different from the other players, and it's really attractive to watch. So, but I just want to like understand like where did that style come from? You know? I would say it came from playing in world cricket. That you know that you get inside the line, you play the front shots on the ball, you get scoop, you reverse paddle. I, I do reverse paddle in international games, but when before the twenty twenty version. Um, Persian came along. You would play more technical, you yeah. understand? But when 2020 come and you know a guy is going to nail six walkers, you can hope that he miss one. You have to improvise at some point in time. And batting in the, in the power play, when a guy is swimming, he feels it more like and he's swimming in the ball. You have to predict what he's going to do. Yeah. So predicting what he's going to do doesn't mean you're going to do something out of the ordinary, but trying to improvise and play to your strengths. Yeah. So I find my strength is trying to predict what the guy is going to do and set up myself, which is also a copy meditating. But in 2020 cricket, you're allowed to be meditating. Yeah. When you're opening batsman and you need to get 45 in, in the first six, and you have seen when I'm going to, you have to be meditating. Yeah. You can't hope, you can't think that you get a bad ball from Sonarai when he goes forward to play how many bad balls you're going to get. So eventually you have to premeditate. So you have to make your own style. Yeah. Some batsmen reverse hit, some batsmen paddle sweep. I just find my own style of batting and it works me. And like how do you feel even watching them? Like and you do acknowledge that your style is um flamboyant and is different from other other players, but how do you feel like watching you know yourself back and you know watching yourself dominate other players? I watched back a lot of IPL games that I played, especially 2015, that year when we won. I was the most consistent yeah. in my career at that point of time. Um, thinking about it now, right, is all about knowing my game, right? Understanding what I can do and playing to my strengths. Right? Because sometimes you go there with a game plan and yeah. it doesn't work for you. But once you stay within your strengths and do what works for you, it yeah. comes out. So I had a game plan back then, which was to get to 30 runs, right? 
I took 50 grams, and after 50 grams, I took off from it. But it also was getting a stack, and not every day you get a stack. And I want to tell other, tell like yourself and other players like Solazan or Ewart Nicholson, cricket is a tough game. You're not going to get a stack every day. But the days you get a stack, you need to make it come. Because come sometimes, three, four games, you will get yeah. a stack. Yeah, sure. Um, and even touching on that experience in IPL, I remember you was, you, was, you were talking about um, your first game you played, you made like around 20, 37 off, around the same amount of balls, and that the management weren't too happy with that. But then after that, you just kind of um, transformed them. I guess it, you, at, from that point in time, you were, as you said, really consistent. And um, I guess it, the problem of that of the striking wasn't that much. But like, what happened after? What happened after? So I played my first game. My first game was against China. So obviously, you are going into a tournament that you never played before. You would have some nerves, and. It was not playing on a surface I'm not accustomed to because I played in India before, but it was playing in a different environment which is with IPL. Yeah. Right? So it was very different for me. And yes, I tried to get a score. Also I tried to do what I do best, which is maximize the ball play. But it's not a place where you go and you get five by five bad balls out of six. Yeah. Right? I mean you you auctioning for players, spending millions of dollars, you are picking the best players in the world. You have all territories, all the countries that pick from, so you are picking the best players in the world. So I feel like I, I felt a, a little bit pressured at the, at the point of time. But going forward, I understand that it was about striker. Yeah. And knowing that the, the lineup our batting team had, that we had that in our batting, and it wasn't about if we lose wickets. So they made me understand that listen, you go out there, you be explosive. You want to be explosive, you want to play your game, you want that Caribbean feel that you, you bat it. And Caribbean style that you bat it, go out there, play fearless cricket, and going for that sort of it. And how, how good does it feel to be in an environment where you know, you're back to do well and back to play your game? Because um, I know many times you may, you may be in a team or just an environment where you know you feel like it's hurt. Won't do well in every good job. Um, but how does it feel to be to play in an environment where you, know, you are back and your skills back and everyone has confidence in you? Well, obviously, any team that you play, you will want the support of the, of, of the technical staff, the management, to know that you can go out there and get the job done. But cricket is also consistency. So yeah. if you go out there and you're not consistent for four or five games, you know what's going to come. Yeah. And playing in IPL where there's 25 guys on the bench. Right? 25 guys in a team and you go there and you don't perform three games yeah. you know what's going to happen so in order to stay in the team you have to be consistent so it's about being consistent to do what you have to do for the team and also making sure that you win matches for the team so in IPL they want match winners to be honest they want match winners Pollard, Harry Pagner David Warner, everybody who they pick for the big money have to be match winners. So I look at myself as a match winner. So when I get the opportunity to go there and back, I put my best foot forward and I do what I do best, which is maximize the problem. And you are, um, over your career, you have been, um, obviously, your style is playing aggressively, but I think I've like noticed or that's a bit like that's what following you obviously. Um, you have been aggressive but you have a very good skill of building innings um, and taking your team to the end. Like let's give like if give an advice to young players who, who who like to play aggressively but also uh, may want to or may find themselves in a situation where they at the same time have to try to battle try to bat, bat through innings, build an innings. Um, how do how do they balance that? You know, play play aggressively. You know? Well, this is where they say when you get experience. So when they say Hussey's experience, David Warner's experience, you get experience from playing over a matter of time, amount of games, being in the same situation over and over and repeating itself. So when I was like 25, 26, I used to be playing 
Please, I should get, get a 50 out in 60s. Get a 50 out in 60s. And I keep asking myself, why I keep asking in 60s? Why I keep you receiving over and over? So, and it then, it, it appeared to be like, it's like you had enough, right? And it's not about to meditate as well. So I just talk about first class, but guys who play first class cricket, is about wanting to hunger. Not wanting a hundred, a hundred is just a hunger. You bat in, you want to bat, you want to bat, you want to keep repeating itself over and over and over. As I said, you get a start, you score 50, right? You know your fault is getting out at 60, 70, you work on that, get past that stage. And then you get to realize this. Two years after, when you look back, this is what I was doing wrong. This is why I wasn't scoring hundreds. This is why when it's 30s, I was getting in this situation. And then you learn how to deal with it. So you learn next time you're in 30s, what happened. So, for instance, I just join a reference. Cody, watch how many games he, he wins for India. Because he's accustomed to in that situation over and over and over and over again. So when he goes to back now, two wickets without two wickets down, no yeah. runs on the board. He's mentally tough to do what he has to do, and he does it easy. So, at a young age, he mastered that skill, so it comes easy for him now. So, everything is, is processing. If you process things earlier, and know your game earlier, you read yourself, understand your game, and know what you can do, and read the situation of the game, situation awareness in any cricket, one day to 20 test cricket is very important. Situation awareness, once you read that, going forward and make it, make, make it very easy for yourself, right? And for once who you come up under you to teach them. Um, so I've been, so, so me talking to David Williams, uh, he always said that you were one of the best players in terms of analyzing on the pitch, especially at the beginning and maybe after a couple of us, you would always send up um, target that you want to make or um, there's the shots that they could have or, could or can't play in this so, For me, that's a, a skill that um, coming up, I, I, I never really learned. I don't think like somebody will sit down and say, well, if the wicket is like this, you know, you can see the shots. Obviously, like, the wicket is more half, a lot of much, so you know how to, how to play, but um, I don't think that's a skill that a lot of young players you know, or coaches really teach. So, like, how did you um, go about learning, learning that? And, um, what are some what, what are some key tips in terms of assessing a wicket and knowing you know, how to go about it? Well, I mean that as an opening batsman, you go to bat. So the first thing you have to do is assess. So as an opening batsman, you assess if the ball is swing. You will assess if the ball has, if the wicket has bounced. You will assess if your spikes go on the wicket. Right. So. You yeah, assess if that grass and you get. And from the first two balls, you should be able to know that, listen, the ball is swinging, the ball has bounced, the ball is seeming. And in Trinidad, you don't get a lot of grass and you get. So the ball will not seem as much, right? Um, growing up here in Trinidad, we are more front the players because of the bounce of the wicket. So, and while growing up, I never had anyone who could really hit you in the head that easy, right? So I was became a front foot player and not wanting to go back. So as you grew up playing for Trinidad, going outside of um, playing outside of Trinidad, you play on different services. Like the first time I went to Barbados, the soil was totally different, and you can feel that when you walk on the wicket, how hard it is. When you went to Jamaica your spikes would slide on the wicket. Could even go in the wicket so you know it's a hard wicket the ball is gonna bounce. So then assessing becomes easier because you play on different surfaces. So it's not like playing in Queen's Park over all the time. You play in Yoga, you play in Border, you play in well, Border of Guyana, you play in Sabina Park. And before you go there you already know what you're gonna get. Right, so my favorite pitch to play on was in there because I know the only thing that out is spin. Yeah. So most of my hundreds I score in pitch slash in there and it's because of assessing pitch 
in you, right? And once you assess it with Jerry, and you know what shots you're gonna play, you will spar on this every time. Um, let's say there will be young players, or any, any players, uh, maybe you got picked for a team, that's how you got picked for the World Cup at 15 and 19. Um, a lot of times you'll be going into environments so, or um, you'll be playing in conditions that you know, you're not even close to being familiar with. Um, so do you think things, things like, let's say for you, for instance, you go into the museum, do you think uh, things like table or doing different things like that would help you to um, prepare better for going? Yes, um, at the end of the day, like, as you, like, in these days, sometimes you have YouTube, you would watch cricket in New Zealand, you would see that most of the ball in New Zealand would swing. The guys might have a, a lot of pace, but they could see the ball of the pitch, the ball would swing really up and stuff. So you know what, how to prepare yourself. And now you can wet one side of the ball, you can scratch one side of the ball and use the water swing. And that prepares you for going to places in places like New Zealand and, and, and England. But the true experience is when you get there. So we coming from the Caribbean and going to England, I'd always say if any batsman in the Caribbean go to England and score 100 against England in England, it's a big hundred. Because I played in England and it's not easy batting in England. There's no bowler in England who used to be on the international team, right? That would be easy to bat in England. Because they all master the art of swinging the ball and reversing the ball and seeing the ball and they know what to do with the ball. It's not like they're just showing up and the ball. They know what to do with the ball. So going outside of Trinidad and playing in England, playing in Australia helps your game a lot. So it's just about getting the opportunity to go out there and play. Um, um, there, were, there was a period in, um, in your career, I, I could recall um, clearly, when you were picked, you, you, you came back into the 50 over team and you did really well. And you, were, you were really consistent against India and Pakistan. I mean, and in some other series as well. I think you made 100 in Bangladesh as well. Um, like what, what was happening in your, in your career at that time? And, um, like how do you recall that time? Well, playing for West Indies, I was never a favorite. Um, every time I played and two games passed and I didn't score, I would get dropped. So I know that there's always pressure on me to perform. And I just, I think, right throughout my career, bad mind carried me a, lot, a very long way. I had bad mind, I was determined to do well, right? And I know when my back against the wall is when I'm best in my performance, yeah. it's when I turn up. So, at the end of the day, you're a batsman, there's only one thing can help you in staying in a team, it's being scoring runs and being consistent. Going back in terms of so you, in terms of your career with the West Indies team, um, I think you are a very good star batsman. Obviously, you know you can bat, you can point, you can bat in the middle. But um, like, how, how did you adjust to you know just one day open and another day like you have to go into go into the middle and still perform? Uh, how how difficult was that? I mean, it wasn't difficult because I'm good. I think I'm good at both pace and spin. And it's just about getting a start if you bat in the middle from being an opening batsman. An opening batsman, you get you get a start with a new ball, spin comes on, you're already in. Right? So, but going in and this, trying to get a start from spinners, once you can maneuver the, the strike and, and work the ball, it'll be easy for you. But as I said, when you play international cricket, it's not easy. You're not going to come up against any any spinner. That's why I come against players like Archimal and and Rashid Khan and those guys, so it's not going to be easy, even if you play against Afghanistan, who people would think easy, and there's guys like Mujib and, and Rashid Khan yeah. and those guys, I don't even pick them up to today, and yet still have to go out there and dominate these guys, and you would think that that's Afghanistan, but at the end, there's two of the best bowlers in the world, so there's no easy team again, so it's hard sometimes, it's hard, but you just have to do what you have to do. And how, especially playing international, um, international cricket, um, you would have a lot of difficult times. Uh, how do you cope um, and manage the loose times where you're not doing well? Uh, obviously, you will get pressure from the press, pressure from fans. Like, how do you deal with the loose times? 
I think there's only one way you can do this is by making runs and, and trying to be consistent because they could only speak about you if you're not scoring runs. Yeah. And not scoring runs and being on a team and, and the team is dragging you along, playing you and everyone is seeing that you're not performing. Obviously the public will talk, you'll be criticized right through. So once you score runs, I mean it's a weight off your back, but sometimes you go into a patch, you just need you just need a chance. You know that a score is right around the corner. You inform and you just get in some good balls. You have no luck, but it also depends on who you are as a player. If you're a high, high, high class player that they would call like a Frisky and those guys, you know at the end of the day they would come good. But if you're a newcomer to the team and you don't get a score within two, three games, you know it's going to happen. So. You just have to let the body be talking. Um, and last, last question in this, uh, on this, in this segment. Um, this is a question I got from one of my um, friends who plays uh, for such a kid. Yeah, he, he asked, like, how, how as a young, from a young, as a, from a young player's perspective, like, how would you, may not break, break into your um, uh, first class team, country, franchise, or whatever? Um, how would you go about? Like trying to like plan or great goals for um, making lessons you know. Um it's about to your career into that into that place. Well, at start I don't think we should want to your goal shouldn't be at the end of a season to make lessons too. Yeah. Your goal should be to do the best you can do and that will take care of itself. Because if you're gonna think about playing for West Indies before you even play your first game then you're being sidetracked. To play for West Indies, first thing you have to do is perform in regional yeah. cricket. Perform consistently in regional cricket. If you go the first two games and you don't get a score, then you start thinking about you behind. Your, from your goal it becomes far-fetched. So your first objective should be to be consistent, to get a start, your open batsman, to get a start, when you get a start, to get to 50, convert into 100. When you get to 100, get a big 100. And every game, get a start, get a start, get a start. Small, do the fundamentals, right? Work hard on your game, and the rest will take care of itself. Because at 17 years, I never think I would play for what is 19. It wasn't in my mind. But it happened because I went out there and things happened how I wanted it to. I performed and I got picked. But it wasn't in my mind to play for West Indies on a 19 at age 17. I mean, you, it would be in your mind and you would know that there's a World Cup right around the corner. But you just have to work on your game. Do what you can do and everything will take care of itself. And one more thing in terms of that. Do you think, so, in terms of having like a broader perspective on, um, you know, if you're around 18 or maybe like 20, 22, uh, in terms of getting on the national team, obviously, like after every World Cup or every year, you would always have a, a batch of young players coming into the first class um, level. Like, how would you, how would you say, how, how would you guide them in terms of, all right, saying that even if you don't do well in the first year or even if you don't do well in the first year, you know, you still have time to build towards something like How do you go that? Because I guess I, a lot of young players may say, well, you know, if you don't do well initially, you'll be happy to come back. Right? No, well, I can, I can talk for myself that the first time you play first class cricket is not, you're not going to dominate first class cricket the first, the first season you play. You're not going to dominate international cricket the first five, six, seven games you play. Right? Everything takes, ex takes time and you need to get experience playing at that level. And along the way, you would fail. That's how you deal with failure. Right? So, you go play club cricket. What you do in club cricket? To me, in, in cricket overall and any sport, the international level is where you make least mistakes. Right? As a batsman, you edge to even turn around because you know it's going to happen. Yeah. They're not going to drop catches at international level. You might get one chance, if so much, if you make 100 in international cricket. Domestic cricket, you might get out two chances, right? 
in club cricket, you might get four or five chances. Yeah. But the higher you go, the chances of getting a drop catch, yeah. miss thumping, those things really mean it. Right? You can tell yourself. So that's the thing. You go practice and you know that it's me. You go to play international cricket, you're going to get one bad ball. You're going to get two bad balls. So you work your way like that. Yeah. Pain yourself mentally to know that I go to the higher level, it's going to get harder. How it's going to get harder? It's just not going to get harder. How you think it's going to get harder? You as a person, batsman, going to play the international cricket. Everyone says it's hard, but they don't know what what is hard about it. And that was hard about it. And that's actually a criminal, like, so in my mind when you speak about that, uh, talk, speaking about it being difficult, uh, I, I would picture in my mind, uh, obviously, you know, facing uh, fast bowlers who are very accurate, uh, very quick swinging the boy, facing spinners who are really good. Um, that's last, last thing. How would you say that? What are some key areas to work on in terms of playing really well against spin? Uh, well against face. Like, what are some areas that people players might be overlooked, but it is important in terms of playing at that level and being being able to you know to score and even survive. I would think that, as I said, playing to your strength. So, for my strength, if I was about an Oscar, as soon as he comes on the ball, I'm gonna take him off. I don't care which end he's gonna ball from. Or spinner should be the right and the food. Yeah. Right? Once the ball is coming into you, you could always cover the cover the line of the ball, right? And hit with the spin, it should be easy for you. So that is just my strength or spinner. I left an orthodox I might give a little more watch too. So you're on 30 and our spinner comes to the ball. You need to cash in. Right? You're on 85 and a, a makeshift seamer comes out the ball. That's your opportunity to score. You were tied on for like two over three over three, and now you get a chance to score. So that's, the, as I say, just knowing your game and knowing your strengths, knowing when you want to score. No, you can't play one way right short your enemy. I'm talking about 40 cricket. You can't play one way right short your right short enemy. At the time you need to accelerate, and then you, you know that you come into the 19, the nervous 19, what, what not. You know that listen, you pull back a little bit, graph, 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 you yeah. get 300, you go back. Um, so we're just switching just the topics of discussion. So um, this is one thing I, I guess myself and players who get to be around players like yourself, um, you know, we would always hear stories about um, what is it all in different places. Um, I guess, you know, behind the scenes stuff, and I think that for me, like I'm always very interested in yeah, that um, kind of stuff. But, there's a lot of people who would not get the opportunity to like kind of get be behind the scenes. So for me, so the first question is basically like, how is IPL like and how how is India like for professional football? I think IPL atmosphere is electric. Um, when you get when you go into the ground, as soon as you come out of the hotel, there's gonna be fans from the hotel straight to the ground, all in blue, right? So nothing excites you more and makes you want to play cricket knowing that you have 40,000 people behind you. The whole stand is going to be behind you to perform. When you go out there, everyone's chanting your name. Posters along the way going to the ground, you see myself in posters and the road. Everyone knows Linda Simmons, everyone knows Dwayne Brown, everyone knows Kyron Pollard. So that alone inspires you to know that you're really important to the setup of this team. And then when you go there and you hear the, the, the crowd roar and you open out the back. I mean, you feel it, you feel it inside that, listen. This is, this, this is serious business, yeah. right? And behind the scenes, like in the dressing room, in the dressing room, Sachin Tendulkar, Malinga, Abhijan Singh, and in Kumbhli, these are guys who you never thought that you'd be around. I remember seeing Sachin in just room and just watching that too. Yeah. I never played for India, so I would know how he would be in a dressing room. And then you're in a dressing room with him on your th- and he's on your team. So you're just watching how he's gonna operate yeah. and then it's like he's so cool and so down to it. 
and you watch his guy on TV and be like, I wonder who this guy would be. And, and then you get to be with him and you see that he's just a normal person. So I guess you know you came from, you just came to the ranks and then you get you worked your way into um, you know, being able to rub shoulders. And, uh, what what are some of the things you know you, you guys do um, between uh, rest days after training before training? Well, we play a lot of FIFA, and that by his time, um, <laughs> being, in, being, in, being in other parts of the world where the time difference plays a big factor, our sleeping pattern changes up a lot. So we would sleep all day and we go all night, because mm -hmm. the games would be night games. So when the whole of India is sleeping, we would be weekend playing games, and then sleep from like 8 in the morning until about 3 in the evening. Yeah. So, these are things people will know, but your whole pattern, everything changes when you, when you leave Trinidad, when you come out of the Caribbean. Your whole pattern changes up, even when you go to Australia. Time difference plays a big factor, so it's just finding your comfort zone, what you what you like doing and what would buy time, because at the end, they, they, you only get to protect it. Yeah. So, um, I guess you touched on a very important thing there. Um, so, you're going on record now. To say, you know, to find out. I guess everybody will follow you and the other guys will know you are FIFA, but I want to know who's the best, who's the worst player, who's the best FIFA player. But then, internationally? Yeah. yeah. Or, or, so, or like, yeah, internationally and also within the West. Um, the best I've played against would be um, Shamaru Uro. Nah! Nah! You sure? Springer. Nah! I never play springs, but I know it's full. No, 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 no. Sorry, no, 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 no. Hold up. Spring up. Spring up. No. No, springs go play. Springs go play. I should have to play, but hold up. 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 Yeah, I custom with them and those guys, but we in and about around the same thing. Yeah, you ever play um, Azari? No, no, I play Azari. That's easy one, easy one player to add the scan. Can't beat them. I was trying to say close to them, like 2 1, you know, 3 1, but he, for sure, he's the player. Internationally, who is the best? Who's the best player? Who's the best player? Um, Do they, um, the other guys play FIFA as much or? No, no, no. I, I wouldn't say. No, they don't play. We, o, only among ourselves we play. So it's just like me, Paula, Kuran, Fletcher, John, um, Johnson, um, Carrie. I might be the worst, <laughs> but I'll still give them a fight. But it's still better than Kuran and... Yeah, I could, I could be Kuran and Paula. Kuran and so, but the stakes are very high, you know, when I play people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bragger, right? So there's a big thing. Now, um, what, like, who are some of the foreign players that have built good relationships with? Martin Guptill, um... I played with Martin Guptill a lot for Guyana, and, um... And been playing at bouncing up in other tournaments, so I'll say with Guptill, yeah. And for me, like growing up watching, like some of the best cricket that I've seen, and really, um, I'm sad or disappointed that I'm, it may not really be able to see that cricket again. Is um, you know the Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago team that played in the Caribbean yeah. T20 and Champions League. So, yeah. like how how being a part of that team was, and how you felt? Being? Oh, it was it was it was great being playing champions then you're playing against all the best clubs in the world so it reminds you of like you for Champions League where you cop against the best so yeah. then you're playing against David Warner and all the best from Australia, you're playing against the best in England. And then we go in there and dominating these guys like was like we are really good and we we are actually better than we thought. Yeah. But we only as good when we play as a team and then you realise that each person on our team have different strengths. And once we play to our strength, then we have 
you can be defeated that easy. So, and that's where a lot of us came to life and you know, started our careers in 2023. And you would say that as like that's why the best setup seat um, you know. Yeah, I would say yes, because that paved the way for our, our careers to start. Because after after Champions League, Bravo went on to play IPL, Paula went on to play IPL, and even I went on to play IPL. And, and a lot of people would not get the opportunity uh, to travel as much as we guys do. Uh, so like what, what what is your favorite country to travel to and like what is your experience there? My favorite country to travel to is Kenya. Because like I said, I always make friends in Ghana. Even when I'm not informed, I make friends in Ghana. So and I like Ghana and I like it. It's just very nice. I enjoy it a lot. And thanks for coming on the show. I'm definitely looking forward to our part two in the future. And guys, this is the first episode of Converse. Thanks for letting us know to be here. No problem. Till next time. Peace. I'll buy a little bit.